Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got for you today is the Viltrox 24mm f1.8 lens. Now, this lens is designed for the full frame E mount cameras. So, I tested this lens using my Sony A7C and also my Sony A6400, which is a crop factor camera. Now, this lens goes for only $429. That's extremely affordable for a fast aperture lens, especially when it has full frame coverage. So, let's see if it holds up in the real world and let's see what kind of optical quality this lens actually pumps out. And also, I will test the video quality, autofocus, speed, and sound. Let's just get right into it. All right, just a quick test here. I'm actually recording with the on-camera audio, so the audio is not going to sound that great. But you can see here using the 24 millimeter lens in my studio environment how much wider it is when compared to my 35 millimeter f1.8 lens, which is what I normally use for this in-studio uh, filming. So this lens is very quiet. Listen, I'll, I'll let you hear when I switch when I let the focus switch. So as you can see, the face and IAF tracking works great, and the lens is near silent. I can't even hear it from the distance I'm at, and right now I'm touching the front of the lens. So the lens is only the length of my arm away, approximately two and a half, three feet or whatever, and I can't hear it from this distance. So it works really well, and the sound is near silent, which I was very surprised. I thought this lens was going to have a little bit of noise. All right, so here she is in my hands. And as you can see, it's fairly small, fairly compact, and it's extremely lightweight. It only weighs 12 ounces or 340 grams. And like I already said, it actually goes for about $430 at the time of this review. Now, this lens offers a pinch style lens hood, which is nice. You can see the front there. It has a 55 millimeter filter thread, and it comes with a pedal style lens hood, as you can see here. Now it has a very large buttery focus ring. This, this focus ring feels absolutely excellent. It's really good, super high quality feel to that focus ring. And I like that it's very large, very similar to my Sony 35 millimeter F1.8 lens. Now another nice feature that this lens offers is the manual aperture ring. It has a pretty hard lock on auto, so it doesn't automatically switch. The aperture ring does not feel as buttery as the focus, however, it's definitely not as smooth and it's not clicked, so there's no clicking in between aperture values, which is nice. It does not have a on and off click switch though. It's only no click, just so you're aware. Looking at it from the back, we have a metal lens bayonet. Build quality looks and feels really good on this lens. There is no rubber gasket here. I do not feel any kind of rubber gasket, so the weather sealing is not gonna be quite as good when it marries up to the camera. So as far as optics goes, this lens offers 11 elements in nine groups. So that's how many pieces of glass are inside the lens. Now amongst those 11 elements, you have two spherical elements, three ED elements, and three high refractive index elements. As far as the minimum focus distance goes, this lens can focus at a, about 12 inches, 11.8 inches. So if you put this guy on a crop factor camera, it's gonna give you an effect of 36 millimeter approximately. All right, so you remember how I said this lens is similar to the 35 millimeter Sony lens? As you can see here, you can see how similar it is, especially that focus ring. I really like that large focus ring. Now the Sony lens doesn't have the manual aperture ring, but it is what it is. Let me show you what this looks like mounted up on my Sony a7C. It's got to line up the red dot here to the white dot over here, like so, and there it is. So that is what she looks like mounted up to my Sony a7C. And as you can see, it's fairly compact and lightweight kit. All right, so here's just a quick focus test. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I clicked on the background where that picture is hanging on the wall and it's nice and smooth and near silent. I can't hear the lens at all. I'm gonna say silent. And uh, now I'm just focusing on the dollar bill quick and then back to the quarter and back to the background. So you can see how smooth and quiet this lens is. All right, so here we are in the lab, and you can see up here on the top left is the EXIF data. So you can see what aperture I was at, ISO, and so forth. And I was shooting in raw quality, just so you're aware. So this is raw quality, and you can see here that the colors and contrast look very, very good on this lens. In addition to that, the sharpness is exceptionally good as well. Even at f1.8, even in the corner areas, you could see here in the corner of the circuit board, 
the sharpness is very good. And I got to be honest, guys, I was not expecting this lens to perform this well in the lab. I thought for sure the corner sharpness was going to be pretty poor at f1.8. It would get better, uh, you know, f2.8, f4, and so forth, but that is not the case. You could see here, the sharpness is very good in the corners, and the bokeh rendering is also very nice, in my opinion. Does a good job. The bokeh balls are nice and round here, and it looks really good on the larger light source back in my bedroom there. Now, let's stop down to f2.8 here, and you can see the vignetting uh, is pretty significant on this lens. When I stop down to f2.8, you can see the corners get brighter, and then f4, they get brighter still, f5.6, even brighter still. Now, f5.6, I enabled the lens correction. That's why you did see a little bit of a shift when I switched to this photo. So you can see here the distortion that this lens produces is very minor. It's really not that bad. And Lightroom does a great job in fixing the minor distortion as well. So let's check out a couple minimum focus distance shots here. So this is taken at approximately 12 inches away or so. And if I zoom in here, you can see the sharpness is very good although there is a little bit of fringing. So let me go to 200% here, and you can see there's a little bit of purple fringing. I'll actually go to 300%. See that purple fringing right there? It's very minimal, but it is there, and it goes away when you stop down to f2.8. But I gotta say, even at f1.8, that's that fringing is so hard to see and so minimal that it's not that big of a deal. It's also easily correctable in Lightroom. So you can fix it if you want as well. But again, looking at f4 here, minimum focus distance, you can see the bokeh ball renderings are looking pretty good. They are slightly off as far as the octagoning shape goes, but you can see the larger light source looks excellent. All right, guys, so here's some real world photos. And you can see here I was shooting at f8 at down at the basher kill. And you could see I was shooting raw quality. I did do a little bit of light editing on these. Meaning, um, right here you can see I dragged the dehaze up just a little bit. Texture, um, blacks I brought down a touch. I can show you what the original raw file looked like. It looked like this, a little bit flat. So I just added a little bit of contrast basically. So that's straight off the camera and that's what I did to it. So I did do a little bit of contrast editing on these photos. Now here's a minimum focus distance. I focused on somebody's worm lure here. And just look at that buttery background. Nice and creamy looking. So you can see here, looking at the front of my car, it's really sharp and the background is out of focus. You could see that here, the car coming up. It's a little bit out of focus there. And that's some pretty good separation from the background considering how wide of a lens this is. 24 millimeters, pretty wide on a full frame camera. I was shooting at F2. Now here's just a couple more snapshots here. I focused on the flowers in the foreground or the weeds. And you can see the background blur is really nice. Nice depth of field there. Here's just another angle. Here's a quick snapshot of me in the car. And uh, I thought this came out really good. This uh, looks really nice. Nice clarity, color, contrast. I'm pretty happy with that. This one I edited a bit. This is my, uh, my brother's dog. He lives in Texas. I went down there for a uh, 50th uh, birthday here. And this is Selkie the dog. A beautiful German Shepherd. And this is the unedited photo, and this is the enhanced photo. So I did do significant editing on this because I wanted to get it printed for them, just, you know, as a thank you type thing. Beautiful dog, great picture, and I'm super happy with the quality of this lens. Now here, I'm just focused on the table, like a sugar dish or whatever this is, and you can see the background bokeh ball rendering is just awesome, and that depth of field play is also really good. Now here, I'm just looking at a placemat, and you can see the depth of field is extremely shallow, but the sharpness is very good in the sharp areas, and that's at f1.8. Now here's the same shot at f4, and you can see the sharpness and depth of field grew significantly. Now here's just a beer can. Again, I'm just taking snapshots here to show you the sharpness, color, and background defocus that you can get. Just another shot here. I love the way that these lights render in the background. They look super cool. Now here's just a cool light bulb and it's reflecting off the, you know, like the clear glass light shade. And I thought that was a pretty cool shot. Here's just looking up at balloons that are actually bouncing on the ceiling. And here is the string coming down on the balloon. That's what that is. Here's one of my mom. My brother's actually reading birthday cards. And uh, we were all laughing, having a good time, some funny cards. Here's one of my nephew, David. He's studying. 
uh, for a class that he's taken. Here's my brother Dave, super happy. He just turned 50 and he's petting Selkie. Another one of Selkie there. She loves her lobster. <laughs> and you can see here, by the way, the light coming in is quite harsh because the windows are in the background. But you can see this lens handles that well and maintains contrast pretty good. Um, you can see it here is a little bit washed out on the top, which is fairly normal. But still, the, the lens does a pretty good job. Now, here's just a purse, and I just wanted to show you the detail and sharpness at f1.8 there. It's very good. I then stopped the lens down to f2.8, and you can see that sharpness picked up a little bit. And uh, that also looks very good. And here's one more shot at f4, and you can just see incredible sharpness, detail, color, clarity, and so forth. Now, here's just one outside of my brother's house. They actually got chocolate bars made for him. I thought that was really awesome. Put up a collage here, and you can see Dave. And that's actually my brother Dave, my brother Chris, and that's me there all the way on the left. So you can see what I used to look like as a kid. Same thing here. Here's the three of us again. I'm the little guy on the right. There's Chris and Dave. And another one of the three of us here. So they went all out. They got an awesome tent here with the chairs and everything. Full bar set up with all the coolers. And 24 millimeter just works out great for shots like this. Now looking at this high contrast napkin here, the lens performed quite well. And here's just another one showing off that depth of field. And another one just to the bar, some cool looking bottles. And this is just being illuminated by the sun. I thought it looked pretty cool shooting it from this direction. Here's one of my mom, super happy. Here's one of my nephew, Joseph, he looks like a rock star with those glasses on. I love this shot. Now these were lower light photos and I was actually using my Sony a6400 for these shots down in Texas. I wanted the lightest kit possible so I actually went for the crop factor camera. So these are approximately 36 millimeter shots that I took down here in Texas. And I got Dave a walker as a joke because he's getting old, you know. And let's see here. Here's one out front of this gourd. I just wanted to show you how cool this looks with the background out of focus and everything. I'm back to using the Sony a7C full frame camera. Now check this one out of Jace. I thought this came out pretty good. Here's another one. Look at his funny face. It almost looks like I was lighting these with off camera lighting, but I wasn't. It was just the natural lighting from the sun. And you can see these shots came out really good. Here's a few of Layla. Super happy with these. I like that shot in particular. Look at that. I mean, just killer color, clarity, sharpness, depth of field. Really nice, really nice portrait in my opinion. It's like a wide angle portrait. Here's shooting into the sun and you can see this super high contrast white weed flower thing uh, rendered excellent. And that's at f1.8. And like I said, I got a ton of sample photos here. This one's taken at f2.8, just a fence fall off type shot. And this one is at f1.8 and you can see the sun in the background on the top right there. And it just butters out really nice. It's a nice smooth rendering. Here's one of Jasmine laying on the couch. This is like the most adorable dog ever. <laughs> this dog is so cute. It's absolutely unbelievable. Look at that face. I mean, unbelievable how cute this dog is. She's such a sweetheart too. So soft and cuddly. Here's just a little more sample footage here. I was just spinning the pedal around just so you could see the color, clarity, depth of field play, and so forth. And here's just another focus transition. lens performs amazing. So at the end of the day, guys, after testing this lens extremely thoroughly, I cannot recommend it enough. It is a phenomenal lens, especially for the money. Checking out the lab testing, the corner sharpness and fringing control is really good. And the autofocus system is extremely quiet. You can't even barely hear it at all which is, I was very surprised by that, honestly. And in addition, the full frame corner to corner optical quality is really, really good. I also did not expect that. I thought the corners were gonna be soft for sure, especially at f1.8. But as you can see in the lab testing, this lens really does hold up extremely well. I think this is a great option. I would highly recommend getting this lens. So other 24 millimeter options, you have the GM lens, which goes for about $1,300. That's a lot of money versus 430, but you are getting better optical quality. And that lens does also offer a faster f1.4 aperture, which is really nice. But 
f1.8 on a full frame is really fast and it's good enough for almost all situations that 1.4 will just give you that extra depth of field control and a little better low light performance but it comes at an extremely high cost also sony offers the newer it's a relatively newer lens it's a 24 millimeter f 2.8 lens and that is also a really nice lens option except it's a slower f 2.8 aperture so if you want the faster aperture which i would recommend i would go with this viltrox lens sam yang also makes a similar lens it's a little bit more money it goes for about 450 dollars i did not test that lens myself but i would assume that it's fairly close to this lens uh, in performance, but again, I did not test that lens, so it's hard to say. The other 24 millimeter lens option out there is the Tamron 24 millimeter f2.8 lens. Now that lens is also an excellent option and it's super affordable. It's only $199 at the time of this review. So if you don't need the faster f1.8 aperture, I would recommend getting the Tamron 24 millimeter f2.8 lens. That is a phenomenal option, super high quality optic, great autofocus as well. So keep that in mind if you're on a, a real, real budget and that f1.8 isn't critical, the f2.8 Tamron is the way to go in my opinion. So another option you have is the Sigma 24 millimeter f2 DG lens. That's also a really high quality option. It's a little bit more money though. It's about $640 at the time of this review. And uh, it's another 24 millimeter option that's a little bit faster than the f2.8 options that are out there. But again, I would still recommend this lens based on my testing because the optical quality is excellent and the price point and the weight, low weight, uh, it's just a really, really good option. I really think this lens is worth the money. It's for 24 millimeter and if you're on a budget like I am, I use the Sony a7C because I'm on a budget. I wanted the most affordable full frame e-mount camera. So for 24 millimeter, this is the lens I would buy. And uh, I'm looking forward to using this lens in the future as well, because I have decided to keep it. It's that good. All right, so I really hope you guys got what you were looking for in this lens review. If you have any questions, be sure to ask below in the comments area. And also do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and like the video if you uh, felt like you got what you were looking for when it comes to the Viltrox 24 millimeter f1.8 lens review. So. Have a great day. I will catch up with you guys next time. And, you know, be safe out there, okay? Take care.